Hi, my name is Susie Gordon, and I'm Colin Feather's Nana. I'm so happy to be in the classroom today with you to read a story. I've chosen Tommy DePaulo's Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato because it's around St. Patrick's Day, and I thought you might enjoy an Irish folktale. So let's get started. Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in Ireland. He would do anything to get out of work, especially when it had to do with growing potatoes. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, will have nothing to eat this winter unless you dig up the praddies. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. Me back is as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get out of bed. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and the watering and the weeding, anyhow, would go out into the dining garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seeds. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke, the village women said. Why, it's the first time she's had a rest since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig up meant no praddies all winter, and no praddies meant no food. Oh, poor me, Jamie wailed. I'll starve to death. I'd better go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon old death will be knocking at my door. So, even though it was midnight, Jamie set off for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard a singing and a tap, tap, tap and sound. Sure, and I wouldn't be knowing, Jamie whispered. But I swear, that's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of fern in the moonlight was a leprechaun, singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattail and held firm. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, said Jamie. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for fairies who pay them with their gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortal Man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fairy shoes and I only have one or two pieces of gold. Wouldn't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I do with a wish? Jamie asked. Me who's about to die of starvation because my wife's sick in bed and can't dig the praddies up for winter. And they're such puny praddies anyhow. Well, 
said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket. You could wish for the biggest party in the world. It would last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant it, water it, and wait. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted. And as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, he let go of the coat tails and off the leprechaun scampered. When Eileen heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well. Giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed? Well, I'm going to plant that seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said as he went out. And Faith and Eileen did see. In no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig the pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he pondered what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you knew it, the hell up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Where did it come from? They asked. Jamie told them about that lucky night when he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why anyone could have gotten a pot of gold. Jamie bragged, but the biggest party in the world? Well, that took some doing. However, did you outsmart that leprechaun? They all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. We'll help you dig up that pretty Jamie, if you'll tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes and started to dig. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew out of the hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up and came to a stop wedged between the stone wall and either side of the road. What to do now? Pratty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by, the constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in and out of the village? What shall we do? the villagers wailed. Then they looked at Jamie and they said, It's your Pratty. You have to move it out of the way. Well, Eileen spoke up. There's more than enough pretty for everybody. Why don't you take some? So the villagers saw it and chopped and carried off huge pieces of potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall 
and watched. All winter long, everyone had potato to eat and eat and eat until no one wanted to hear the word potato ever again. In the spring, Jamie said, I've saved a potato eye for the sea, and it's just about time to plant it. Oh no, the villagers cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we promise before St. Patrick and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie was right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story. I sure did. What wish would you have made if you had had the choice? Or would you have taken the pot of gold? Well, that's something to think about anyway. Well, I hope you have a good day. Bye.